What's going on YouTube? So today's video we have a one year review of the Deco XE75 Pro. We're going to be going through all the specifications, my personal user experience, and as well as if this is worth it or not. I've had this for over a year. It's been out for basically a year as well. I got it right when it released. So we're gonna be taking a look at it and telling you whether or not it's good. This is a tri-band mesh system. The coverage is about 5,500 square feet for two nodes. There are three options available. There's one node coming at 199.99 at 2,900 square feet for that single node. The two pack, which two nodes, the ones that we have, 299 is the price tag. And like I mentioned before, the square foot reach is 5,500 square feet. And they also do have a three node pack retailing at $400 and the square foot rateage is 7,200 square feet. The reason I didn't get that one and the reason that why I don't recommend that one is because speeds tend to slow down the more nodes you have. This will change over time for Wi-Fi 7. Three packs is too much, it slows down. Two pack is a sweet spot because you're getting a good amount of range and covering it in a very fast amount of area. Now this does replace your existing router and any extenders that you do have. It does have an AI smart switching technology. So that's what the mesh is. It's able to seamlessly transfer your phone Wi-Fi from node one to node two if you move areas. We can change this in the settings and I'll go in depth with that as well in the app. Like I mentioned before, this does have a six gigahertz band that you are able to use for either Wi-Fi or a dedicated backhaul or both. The dedicated backhaul uses either the 6G, you can use it from wired with an ethernet or wireless node share. Dedicated backhauls help with more stable connections whenever you are using the rest of the Wi-Fi for 2.4 or five gigahertz, or you can also use it to use a six gigahertz band Wi-Fi. There are a total of three bands, like I mentioned, and the speeds do vary for a total of 5,400 megabytes per second for up to 200 connected devices. 6G has a max capacity of 2,400 megabytes per second, 5G is the same at 2,400 megabytes per second, and the 2.4 gigahertz is at 574 megabytes per second. Super easy, one-time setup. I only had to set it up once and never had to touch the app again. This also does work with your Amazon Assistant to turn on and off the guest Wi-Fi only. It does work with all of the internet providers, for example, Comcast, Charter, AT&T, Verizon, Xfinity, Spectrum, RCN, CenturyLink, Frontier, etc. This does have many Wi-Fi encryptions depending on which Wi-Fi network you're using, such as WPA, WPA Personal 1 through 3. 6G can be used wireless. This does offer an optional home protection called Home Shield, which gives you security options or parental control options. Now, when you're using the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz band, you can choose 160 megahertz or 80 megahertz frequencies whenever you're setting it up. Within the app, you can also prioritize certain devices to be faster by putting it at 1000 megabytes per second upload and download max per device. For an example, the connection preference for a Mac would be the preferred mesh node it needs to be at, so if you want it to be set to auto mode, change it to auto mode and it'll automatically switch between node one and node two. Or you can choose a specific stationary node. So if you're only in node two, if your Xbox or PlayStation is only by node two and you don't move it, keep it only at node two. You can change that. But it's good to also have it on auto just in case. You can change these high priority options between always on, one hour, two hour, four hour, etc. The basic features that you get with the device are new device alerts. Whenever new devices are popping up, it'll automatically notify you. Router security scan, so it automatically detect anything. And also a wireless security scan. For the parental basic features, you do have pausing the internet, blocking specific websites, and filtering out certain websites by category. If you wanted to upgrade that, that's where the security plus and advanced parental controls come into play. These both do have a 30 day free trial. The Security Plus offers a web protection, intrusive protection, IoT protection, comprehensive report, retails for $35.99 a year or $5 a month. The advanced parental controls have flexible bedtime, off time control, time limits, time rewards, comprehensive insight, detailed reports, and retails for $18 a year 
or $2.99 a month. Now, if that wasn't enough security options for you, they do offer a total security package, which includes a few other third party type of thing that you could technically get on your own. It's all bundled in. So this includes all the basic and security plus features that I just mentioned before, no parental stuff. And it also includes antivirus protection, unlimited VPN, password management, and PC cleaner. This has an introduction $70 annually, and then after the first year, it'll renew to $130 a year, which is mind blowing that they added. It boosted up from $36 to $130 a year, just for four things that you can get on your own. So I never ever touched any of those. No, none of the features. I just stuck with basic. I had no issues with it works fine. This does have an IoT network option, an internet of things, and it creates a dedicated network to manage your smart lights, your smart strips, cameras, TVs, speakers, anything you have that's smart related in a separate network that you can easily manage and control those specific devices. This does offer IPv4 and IPv6. Prefer the IPv6 option because of more security reasons and it also makes the internet faster. A little insight if you didn't know, IPv4 is a 32-bit IP address whereas IPv6 is a 128-bit IP address which means the IPv4 has 4.3 billion addresses that can be reused and are reused multiple times on all of your devices throughout your network whereas IPv6 has 7.9 times 10 to the 28th power number of addresses. If you don't know what that number perspective is, 79,000 trillion trillion addresses, which is an insane amount, meaning you're able to have multiple devices have multiple different addresses on the same network. So it's harder to trace from outside sources. IPv4 addresses typically start off with 192.168.5.18, something similar to that threshold. It is a manual configuration, which is set by our IP provider. Whereas the IPv6 has a alphanumeric hexadecimal notation address, which is highly complex, including both letters and digits in the same area. And this is auto configurated, so you don't really ever have to touch it. And like I mentioned before, it is faster. Now on the units itself, they do have a total of three ethernet ports on the back, one of them being a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port, and the other two being additionally one gigabit per second ethernet ports. Also when setting up, it will tell you if it's in a good area or not. So it's dummy proof whenever you're setting this up. Typically I would like to put it into places that are in front of a doorway. So you're not in the furthest corner possible when setting this up. Now my personal experience is I have a 500 megabyte per second plan and I'm usually getting my money's worth. If you don't know what that means is I'm getting right around 450 minimum megabytes per second all the way up to 500 and 500 plus megabytes per second. Sometimes on a good day, I'm getting over 550 megabytes per second upload. Download, I'm getting right around 20 megabytes per second. Still, We still need to work on that somehow. Upload is definitely good and upload is mainly if you're browsing the web or watching YouTube videos, watching TV, playing video games, that's the 550 megabytes per second speed. Whereas download is if you're uploading stuff on YouTube, uploading stuff on the network, uh, it's gonna take a lot longer whenever you're doing stuff. I had no issue to, uh, for me, but because I upload very huge files and it still crushes it no matter what, it could be faster. And that's just on my end, but this is definitely able to handle a lot faster speeds when it comes to uploading and downloading. So overall, in my one year experience, I had no issues whatsoever, stable connection, very far range. I'm able to go about a street away before I'm having to reconnect to the Wi-Fi or disconnect automatically. Um, this is an amazing device without a doubt for it retailing only 300 bucks. On Black Friday, you can get it for 250 and under. I believe I bought it before Black Friday and then I returned it so I can get it $50 or $100 off, you know. I recommend saving your money to get this on Black Friday or whenever you possibly can. Even if you buy it now, it's a really great deal. You will not be ashamed about it. It's an amazing device. I don't recommend getting the home shield. Maybe they'll upgrade that in the future. It doesn't really have any eye catching features that I would like. Maybe the parental controls if you're into that. It, they, I'm glad that they separated those subscriptions and made the parental stuff a little cheaper, but it's nice that they included free features to handle your basic needs, which is nice. I love that they're way smaller 
than my Orbi mesh router that I previously had, which only had 5G capability. This one has 6G, which is able to use my MacBook Pro 2023 version that has Wi-Fi 6E. I'm able to handle the Wi-Fi 6E speeds. It's really nice. And if I wanted to in the future, you could probably use fiber if you have that fiber availability in your area. And thank you guys for watching. If you guys wanna check out more videos just like this on my channel, I'll leave a link in the description for the product as well as some of the videos I recommend watch. Without further ado, let's get to 10K subscribers. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. We out.